Hi guys, it's Liz Stapleton here from ElizabethStapleton.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the General Data Protection Regulation, otherwise known as the GDPR, which may have some of you in a bit of a tizzy because of the May 25th, 2018 deadline. So just to back it up a little bit, this isn't something that just got thrown in the mix. It was actually approved back in 2016. Though I'll be honest, I've been blogging since 2014 and I can't say I became really aware of it until more recently. So. If you're kicking yourself for not knowing about it sooner, don't, you're not alone, and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> so what it really is for is to protect people's data. So I think we've all heard plenty of news stories where companies' data was hacked, you know, in some manner, and then they didn't tell people about it until like years later, which is just messed up. If you've been a victim of that, I'm sure you can understand how frustrating that is. So what the GDPR does is it aims to help people protect their data and hold companies accountable in keeping that data secure and making sure that they let people know of any breaches in a timely manner, primarily 72 hours rather than, you know, two years. So basically what this means for bloggers and why it applies to you even if you aren't located in the EU, because it is important to note that this isn't just about EU residents, it's anyone that's located in the EU gets these protections as well. So you could, it could be a foreign exchange student from America studying abroad in France, and they're going to apply this. So they may be your target audience, but because they're in France, you need to make sure you're complying with the GDPR. So it's going to primarily affect bloggers in terms of their privacy policies, as well as email marketing and how they collect information, as well as what information you're collecting if you're using something like Facebook ads or Google Analytics because you are collecting information even if you don't realize it. Um, so you need to make sure that people on your site are aware of this and that you have their consent to do so. And I'll dig into a lot of other things and consent is just one of the aspects of GDPR but it's a big one and it's one that really does impact how bloggers do business. So. In this guide, I'm going to walk you through that as well as tons of other stuff. We're going to talk about you know, what it is, what it means, the basics, um, consent, how data is used, how much data you need to be collecting and, and how long you're keeping it, what actions are impacted, your options in choosing to comply with GDPR or not, and, and sort of what those consequences may look like. And it's a risk reward situation that you'll have to weigh for yourself. Um, also be covering, you know, how GDPR is actually good for you. I know it seems like it's a lot of work and maybe it's going to impact your business negatively, but GDPR is actually, I think, a really good thing for bloggers. It's going to, people who comply, it's going to take them to the next level, raise them up above others and help them do better business. So I think it's actually a really good thing and I'll be going over that as well in this guide. I'm going to talk about how you can review what data you're currently collecting so that you gather it all up because maybe you're not aware of all the data you're actually collecting. We're also going to talk about how your privacy policy should comply. If you need to use checkboxes on email forms, I know that's a question that a lot of people have been wondering. So I'll be going over that and sort of different options you have regarding email forms. You don't actually necessarily need checkboxes. So we'll be talking about that in this guide as well as getting consent with cookies. Um, and how you use cookies on your site and how to prove consent. So you have to be able to show that you got consent from users um, if you're ever audited. So how you're going to be able to show that using the tools that you have as well as how to provide users the right to be forgotten. I'll be going over all of that in this guide and hopefully by the end of it you'll be feeling a lot better about GDPR and what you need to do to comply and put yourself in a good position in terms of your business and these new laws that are coming into effect. So enjoy the guide.